What's up guys, Justin here with the RenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to walk you through some of the settings that I use to create my renders inside of Lumion. So I did a video about this a while ago and I wanted to update it for the newest version, Lumion 11. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, so that everyone can follow along, I'm gonna use one of the example models contained inside of Lumion. So we're just gonna go into the examples tile and in this case we're going to go with the beach house in the lower right hand corner so this is a good start for us to uh, build off of inside of our rendering so we're going to open this up and then we'll talk about the settings that we can use to create a rendering inside of Lumion. All right, so you can see how this built-in model is nice to uh, kind of practice our settings on because it's got everything already kind of set up with all the different models in it and other things like that. So we don't necessarily have to go um, worry about the setup there. So there are some things you want to make sure that you have context models and other things like that in here um, when we create our rendering. But overall, I want to focus more on the settings than the model setup. Um, if you guys need help with the model setup, leave a comment down below and we can talk about uh, possibly doing a video on that later. But for now, what I want to do is I'm going to go into photo mode. And so when I go into photo mode, what that's going to do is that's going to get us in the mode where we can export our images. And for right now, there's a camera view that I want to use. So um, I'm just going to use the camera view for the bedroom right here. And we're just going to copy this camera. So we're just going to click over here and click on store camera. So that's created a base view that we can use in order to build our scene. And so remember that the goal with Lumion, because one of the great things about Lumion is that you can load presets. So you can save and load your different effects files in here. We want to build an effects file that we can come back and use later. So the goal here is to have all these built out as presets so you can just load them rather than messing around with a ton of settings over and over again. So I'm just going to kind of go through these one at a time and uh, we'll just kind of talk through a little bit of some of the adjustments that I'm making. Remember that a lot of this has to do with the kind of image that you're trying to create. So there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer as much as uh, getting a result that you want. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to start adding our effects. And so I'm going to start by adding a real sky. And so the real skies um, are the skies that go in the background inside of Lumion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the rotation here so that my light is coming through the window in the background of this page. So, and I'm gonna leave the overall brightness as is for right now. We may come back and adjust that later. But now, let's start adding some other effects. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a shadow effect. And so for the shadow effect, I'm gonna bring this up to about 1400. I'm gonna adjust my coloring to something like 1.6. Notice how it's very subtle, but what you're getting is you're getting a little bit cooler shadows in here when you do this. And then I'm gonna bring my brightness down for right now. So notice how um, the lower this is, the higher the contrast between the dark areas and the light areas. So we're gonna start with 0.1 for right now. And then um, we're gonna adjust our interior exterior probably up to about 0.2. 8 or 0.9. We're going to bring our Omni Shadow up to 100%. So notice how I'm getting more detailing around the edges when we do that. And for now, I'm going to leave my shadow type at normal. And then finally, I'm going to check the box for fine detail shadows. So if I click in here, notice how this is rendering out my shadows and I'm getting a fair amount of detail around the edges. And so now, Let's go back and adjust our exposure. So we're gonna add an exposure effect. So for the exposure effect, you wanna go down to camera and you're looking for exposure. And so your exposure is gonna allow you to adjust the overall brightness of your scene. So notice how if I bring this down a little bit, then um, I get a little bit more, a little bit more of a darker image, but I'm also getting a little bit more contrast in here. If I was to bring this up, notice how it gets kind of washed out. So you wanna be careful with this one. I'm gonna leave it at this 0.4 value for right now. So now let's do something with our colors. So what we wanna do with our colors is we, we can adjust if this is a warm or a cool scene, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna to go to Artistic 2 and we wanna add the Analog Color Lab. So what the Analog Color Lab is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to apply these kind of color presets to our scene. And so you can kind of play around with these until you get one that you like. So I use this 1.6 a lot. Um, I could see using the 2.0 and then bringing my exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this at 1.6 for right now. And I'm gonna put the amount down some, maybe down to like point 
2. And so now we're going to apply some manual color correction to kind of add some warmth to the image. So this is a personal preference thing for me. So I'm going to go into my artistic one under color correction and I'm going to adjust the temperature. And usually I like cooler colors, but in this case I'm going to bring the uh, color temperature up to maybe like 0.2 because I feel like the image was a little too cool before. Um, I'm going to leave my tint at zero and then I'm going to bring my vibrance up. So notice how the vibrance is gonna make like your blues bluer and uh, your, your colors are a little more strong in that direction. So notice how if you were to bring it way up, you get almost a washed out brown in here. So you wanna be careful with this, but you wanna bring it up enough that you're getting a little bit of additional vibrance in here. So I'm gonna leave this at one for right now. Leave my brightness at 0.5. Um, I think that's gonna work fine for what we're doing here. I'm gonna bring my contrast up a little bit so notice how the contrast is basically going to make the differences between the colors more pronounced. I'm going to bring this up to 0.7, leave my saturation as is, uh, maybe bring my gamma correction up just a little bit, and then we'll leave our limit low on zero and our limit high on one. So now we're going to add a little bit of our of noise to our scene. We don't want a lot. So remember if you basically what the noise does is it adds like a graininess to your image. So this is something that in other rendering programs if you don't have a lot of light you might get these little dots in here. We want to take this and add just a bit um, just because we don't want our image to look too perfect. So we're going to bring our intensity up to 0.1 then we'll leave these other two settings as is. So now we're going to add a sharpen. And so the sharpen is going to adjust how sharp your image is. So notice how if I turn my sharp all the way down, um, some of my edges and other things in here get a little more blurry. If I turn them, if I turn this up, then I get a lot more clear view of this. But too much sharpness can almost make an image look uh, look too detailed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set our sharpness maybe at like 0.4. So now let's add. Hyperlight. And so in advanced, we're going to go ahead and click to add hyperlight. So we're going to add hyperlight to maybe like 40%. And that can just improve the quality of your image. I think it improves the way that the lights reflect off of some surfaces. I'm not 100% clear on that, just that you do want to have it in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple reflection planes. And so reflection planes are what Lumion uses to calculate some light bounces in here. Notice that these can really negatively affect your performance. So um, be a little bit careful. You don't want to put these on every surface. Surface. I'm going to go ahead and add them by clicking on this and clicking on add plane to the glass right here. And I'm going to click on OK. And so that's just going to give us a little bit more reflection off of the glass, maybe. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn on speed ray reflections. And so notice how when we turn on speed ray reflections, we start getting some reflections from our plants and other things like that in here. So um, I wanna go ahead and turn that on. And then we're just gonna make a couple other changes that are kind of fine changes, but they can really kind of make a difference. So the first is we wanna go in here and we wanna add the skylight effect. What the skylight effect is gonna do is it's just gonna give us a little more light in some of our corners and edges. So I'm gonna put this in at maybe like 0.4. Um, it's very subtle, but you'll notice you're getting a little more light um, up in areas like this. Um, saturation, we're gonna leave at one and We'll put our render quality on high. And then finally, we're going to add one more effect, which is called chromatic aberrations. So we're going to go under camera. We're going to add chromatic aberrations. Basically what chromatic aberrations does is a lot of the time when you take a picture or a lot of the time with your renderings, things can look a little bit too perfect or too clear. Like notice um, the edge up here. Um, if you were to take this with a camera, you might get a little bit of color aberration around the edges. So what this is going to do is that's going to allow us to add just a little bit of that. You don't want to drag it way up um, because obviously things don't look very good. But what we can do is we can bring it to a value of like 0.1 or something like that, bring our affected area to one overall. That's just going to take our image and make it so everything's not 100% perfectly sharp. Um, it's a very subtle effect that can really affect what's going on inside of your image. So now what I have 
is I have an image in here that I think gives me a pretty good result. And so one thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to save this effect. So I'm gonna do a file, save effects, and I have a folder for Lumion effects. And so I'm just gonna set this up as realistic render for YouTube. Right there, what I've done is I've saved that. Now I can apply that to other views in the future. But now let's go through and render this out. So we're just gonna go, we're just gonna render it to 1920 by 1080. Um, you can render it higher. And we're just gonna save this as render one. So we'll just click on save and we'll let this render out. So now you can see that this has given us a fairly detailed render inside of our image. And so you can come in here and make changes as well, depending on what you like. Or the other cool thing is, let's say for example, that you wanted to create a different view. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to page two and let's create a different view maybe over here, something like this. We'd probably want our focal length to be a little bit higher, but let's say we wanted to create a view with those settings. Well, we could just go back, I'm gonna store this camera, then I'm gonna go back to photo set one, and I'm just going to, within this view right here, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna do a menu, edit copy effects, and then I can go back to this view, and I can do a edit paste effects. And so we can use this effect to render out our image really quickly just by applying it and copy pasting it the way that we just did. And so looking at this, maybe one thing that I might wanna do is I might wanna bring the overall exposure up a little bit just to brighten up my scene, make it a little bit more of a bright view than it was before. So you can see I can bring this up just by adjusting my exposure right here. And then we could render it out one more time. So we're just gonna render this, we'll call it render to and hit enter. And that's gonna come through and that's gonna render out our image with our settings. All right, so that should give you a pretty good idea of how to set up some settings in order to create a realistic interior render inside of Lumion. Obviously, you can play around with these um, until you get a result that you want, um, depending on your lighting and other things like that. But this should give you a good place to start. I will list all of my settings down below this video. So if you want to take them and add them to Lumion yourself, you can definitely do that. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.